Americans don't generally know that uh, our high incarceration rates have not always been with us, uh, nor do Americans know that in comparison to the rest of the world, we have the highest incarceration rate of any Western democracy. So this report examines the question of how we got here, how is it that we have quadrupled the rate of incarceration over the past 40 years, recognizing that it has not always been so. We used to have low rates of incarceration uh, for 50 years up till the early 1970s, and compared to the rest of the world, our rates of incarceration are unusually high by a factor of five to tenfold. So what we should know about this uh, phenomenon is that it's not always been so. We're different from the rest of the world, and our own history is uh, quite different from our current reality. The high level of incarceration in our country has many meanings for all of us. First of all, it's very expensive, but it also means that one in a hundred adults in America is now in prison or jail. So there are lots of consequences from having so many people in prison and jail, and they all come out at some point. So there's lots of uh, consequences beyond the cost for the individuals and their families, uh, their children, their communities, uh, and for our democracy. So the average citizen should be concerned about this because uh, we're spending money and at a very fundamental level we have to ask what's the value that we're getting for this expenditure of so many people in prison and one of the key findings of our report is that the public safety payoff from this big investment is very uncertain and likely to be very modest. So there are very deep questions about our democracy, the extension of the criminal justice system, the impact on uh, racial minorities, uh, particularly young men of color uh, who are being cycled in and out of prison and jail. So we have to think about uh, the long-term implications of this decision that we've made to put many more people uh, in prison and jail. The main conclusion of our report is that the country has gone past the point where the number of people in prison can be justified in terms of any potential benefits. So that should be a startling conclusion to uh, people reading the report because we've invested so much in prison as our principal response to crime. So there are a number of implications from that finding. Uh, uh, one is, of course, that there should be fewer people in prison. So our main recommendation, based on the evidence, is that the nation should significantly reduce the incarceration rate uh, in our country. Now, there are ways to do that uh, that we also spell out. Uh, one of them is to take a hard look at sentencing enactments that have made long sentences longer. And the science there is very clear that those long sentences have very little public safety value. We also recommend a hard look at mandatory minimums where judges are required to put somebody in prison who might otherwise be sanctioned in the community. And those sentences have very little public safety value according to the research. We thirdly recommend that the country take a hard look at drug policy, where the ramp up of incarceration has far exceeded the any measured benefits. We also take a careful look at prisons as an institution and at the social context within which uh, car crime arises and urge the country to take a careful look at all of those factors with a particular consideration to some overriding principles to make sure that we don't sentence people longer than they deserve, that we don't sentence people more than is required to achieve important benefits, uh, and that we remember that the people who are sent to prison, uh, with rare exceptions, will all return home to live amongst us. So there's some overarching values that are important in this new national conversation, and we hope that this report continues to a constructive conversation that will reduce the use of prison.